So why farcical? Well, I don't know about you, I have numerous times in my life said to myself, wow, life has a sense of humour. I'm sure you have too. And this for me, um, from where I stand now, shows me how much I'm willing to project outwards, how much I'm willing to put the cause of what's happening around me outside of myself. And the purpose of these workshops is to share with you the insight that I've had in my personal life and in my business life about how to bring that focus back inside and really work out who I am outside of the values and beliefs that I grew up with. So what's this really all about? This is a very different approach to training because I'm not going to tell you what you're going to get out of it because I can't tell you that. To be completely honest, your path is your path. What I can tell you is the way that I have found inspiration, the way that I have stepped outside of my culture and been able to see some of the values and the beliefs that I grew up with and I've developed in my early career, how I've begin, begun to see them as, to be honest, a bit of a fabrication. Moreover, I've begun to see them as limitations. Sometimes what we believe or what we think we should be is limiting our incredible power. I had a complete light bulb moment towards the end of last year and I was reading a book and it was a book about quantum physics, which is one of my passions. Um, and it said that the electrical energy inside our bodies is the equivalent to 30 atom bombs. And this was a real shocker for me, I'll be honest, because I thought to myself, 30 atom bombs, that is immense. And that means that as individuals, we are immensely powerful people. So the next question for me is, well, how is it possible being so powerful that we are challenging with the very tangible everyday aspects of life. How is that possible? And so I started to look at how we are brought up, how cultures differ, and how cultures are the same, even though they could be from the other side of the world, and how people actually are very, very similar all across the world. And it dawned on me that actually we put a huge amount of weight against knowing the answer. Have you noticed? Think back to your childhood, think back to school. How important was it to be right? You know, if you knew the answer to a question in class, in your school class, were you praised? I'm pretty sure you were. If you didn't know the answer, were you not praised or were you ignored? or were you overlooked? So we have grown up in a society where firstly, it's really important to know. And secondly, actually we get external praise when we do know the answer. And I believe that this concept of knowing has actually distracted us from who we really are because it's created layers and layers and layers of cultural assumptions and beliefs that are actually untrue or a fabrication and when I say untrue they are untrue they are the untrue version of us and they are causing limitations they are stopping us from achieving happiness achieving excellent health achieving um, what we might define as success and by the way success is obviously unique to you so I'm really interested in how we can break out of this need to know. And by the way, I speak from personal experience. I grew up and in fact have lived most of my life needing to know. I cannot tell you how many books I have read on a wide variety of different subjects. When I started out my career as a trainer, I read everything within that field I could possibly get my hands on because the worst thing for me would be to be asked a question and not be able to give some kind of response. So <clears throat> what makes me so obsessed with this idea of not knowing? Well, 
I started to think about that point of knowing, the point where we sort of try and or have to make sense of something. What's that all about? Well, really, that's about security. Because if we know, if we know the, under, the answer, we feel like we understand it. And if we feel like we understand it, then that feels safe for us. And as a result, result the point of not knowing has actually become unsafe. And yet, we're kind of ignoring the fact that unknowing happens just before we work something out. So that state of unknowing is really our point of creativity, it's our point of power, it's our point of creation or manifestation. And I really believe that we have lost our focus on that. And interestingly enough, society today is so focused on social media and networking and feedback, external feedback. We cannot get enough of it. So how valuable is that? How valuable is that for us in finding our true selves? In my personal opinion, I don't believe it's that valuable. Now, in no way am I suggesting that we suddenly become hermits and set ourselves aside from society. What I'm suggesting is that it's really important to learn to question the obvious. Why do we do it this way? <clears throat> Why is this approach the best way or so important? And it's about stepping outside of the judgment zone. It's about stepping outside of right or wrong, good or bad, and really starting to just be rather than to do. Have you noticed how life is so chaotic these days? For me, since about 2010, it just seems to have got faster and faster and faster. It makes it very challenging to plan long term. Again, another safety feature. And it's, in my mind, actually a really exciting time to be alive because it feels like we are being pushed out of the industrial revolution and into the world of the quantum physical. I feel that we have been operating up until now on Newtonian physics. And even though there was such a big movement forward in the 1920s in the world of quantum physicists or quantum physics, we are still living within the science of 400 years ago. We're outdated. And we're, things, as things get more and more chaotic, what we try and do is we try and control the circumstances around us. And the more we try and control everything, the more we're actually just feeding our fear. Because fear drives us to need to control things rather than to just be in the flow. And in no way am I suggesting that this is something that you can just snap your fingers and do that's really, really easy. Um, I do believe that as we start to focus inside, we actually get to experience the now. We get to experience the journey and we get to find joy in the journey and happiness and we get to find our power, our creativity, our ability to really, famous phrase coming, think outside the box. And I truly believe <clears throat> that the field that I've been working in for the last 10 or 12 years in coaching and training is also over-processed. I believe that, you know, we sort of set out the intention of where we want to go at the beginning, when actually this live process of coaching and training changes, depending on who we're working with, depending on who's in the room, depending on what crops up. And if we can work together to find this point of unknowing, then we can begin the journey of finding out who we really are. And I can personally tell you that for me, this journey has been going on for a number of years and it's a very, very insightful place to be. And the crux of the matter is that I can't tell you how to do it because that would be purposeless. You have to experience it for yourself. And my experience and my journey is not necessarily appropriate for you. It's about finding the right journey for you. It's about finding your authentic journey. It's about stripping back your beliefs, stripping back your values, stripping back your cultural assumptions. And often they're unconscious, by the way, and really starting to work out what is you and what is not you. 
In my opinion, we were in a similar position back in the 1930s. And the energy that's around at the moment feels, to me, very similar of my perception of what was going on then. And back in the 1930s, as a race, we chose to go into war, into the Second World War in 1939. And I really believe that this is a second chance, or it's another window of opportunity for us to take a different path, for us to go inside and work out who we really are and to find our point of power. I really hope that you come and join us for a Fast School workshop. They operate in two day segments. So Fast School one is two days and then after about six or eight weeks in your location, we'll run Fast School Life two. I really look forward to meeting you.